Hi guys and welcome back to Hilltop Farm and welcome to another Sunday Soapbox. This week we're going to be discussing everyone's favourite subject, insurance. Those of you that are regulars to my channel will know that just over a week ago uh, I had a, an accident in my car and that was not last Friday but the Friday before and there was quite extensive damage done to the car. Now, at the accident scene, it appeared, although there was quite a bit of aesthetic damage, so there's sort of like corner of front corner of the car ripped off. Mechanically, it seemed still drivable. Tow trucks were called, other vehicles were towed. I opted to drive mine home because I thought it was drivable. And it was when we started the journey, but the longer we got into the journey, it became more and more obvious that this wasn't a good idea because something was wrong. But anyway, I just went really slowly and carefully and I limped it home. But by the time we got home, you couldn't turn right in it. And the wheel, front wheel, driver's side, slowly worked its way back, back and back and back until it was touching the firewall and the, the body of the car. Um, so it was scraping on there. So I knew, um, I knew by looking at it, I mean, no, no my own ex with my own experience, it needed a new front bumper, new rear bumper, new front right guard or front wing, whatever you want to call it, needed a new driver's door, needed the whole right hand side painted, needed the bonnet painted, bumpers front and back painted, uh, the electric mirror on the driver's door um, was damaged, probably needed replacing, I don't think it was fixable. Now that's just what I could see aesthetically. Plus, inside the wheel arch, you know, there's, there's sort of all plastic mouldings and things and underneath sort of the engine and there's plastic, well all that was ripped off and disappeared and and goodness knows what happened to any of that. So I already knew um, that the damage for that alone was well into the thousands. I know enough about cars to know that it was a write-off. The car was going to be written off. Friday afternoon, having got home and looked at it and what have you, I contacted my insurance company. We had to fill out a form online I was at fault with this accident and I acknowledged that I was at fault. There was no ifs, ands or buts about it. Uh, and if you want to hear about the accident, in the link below, in the description below, I'll leave a link to a video telling you all about it. So I filled out this form, explained what happened. By that evening, the insurance company had emailed me saying they've accepted my claim, but they can't proceed with it until they receive $450, which was my excess that I had to pay. I thought, typical. So, paid it online straight away. So, Monday comes round, and I get a phone call from the insurance company. Strangely enough, they don't ask me any questions about the accident, or hows, or whys, or which I thought they would, because, as I say, if you watch that video, it's quite an odd explanation as to what happened. They just said they were phoning to make an arrangement for me to take the car to a crash repairs. And I said to them, I said, well, as I said in the claim form, the car's not drivable. So, they said, oh. Okay, well, leave it with us. We'll get a crash repairer to pick it up. I said, okay. Tuesday comes and a woman from a crash repairer calls me to say she's phoning to make an arrangement for me to bring the car in to, to for their assessor to have a look at it. And I said, it's not drivable, it needs to be towed. I said, the woman at the insurance company told me that you were going to, to arrange 
a tow truck. She said, oh, we don't do that. We just arrange to have it assessed. And I said, well, who arranges the tow truck? She said, the insurance company. And they have to arrange that through someone else. I said, well, I don't think she knows that because she said she was going to get you to arrange it. No, no, she said. She said, well, look, she said, if I haven't heard anything in a couple of hours, I'll call her and find out what's going on. I said, okay. A couple of hours goes by, and this same woman from the crash repairer calls me, and it was as though our previous conversation had never taken place. And she said to me, oh, she said, it's so-and-so from so-and-so crash repairs. She said, I'm just phoning to make an arrangement to pick up or to have your the, the car towed here to be assessed. I said, I didn't think you did that. She said, sorry. I said, well, last time we spoke, you said you didn't do that. The insurance company did that. Oh, yes, she said, but um, I spoken to her and she wants me to do it. And I said, well, I told you that's what she said. Um, she said, well, that's what I'm doing. She got a bit funny and I said, okay, then. Anyway, she she said, oh, I shall pass the information on. A few hours go by and my phone rings and it's the tow truck driver. He says, I don't know where, where you are. And I said, what do you mean? He said, we've given, they've given me your address here and I can't find you. I said, well, what address have they given you? And he told me, of course, the number was wrong. So I said, no, that, that number's not right. I said, you've driven past. And I gave him the right number. And I said, um, you, you've driven past it. I said, you probably noticed it's got a smashed up silver Mitsubishi on the front lawn. Or front, in, you know. And he said, oh yeah, I saw that. He said, but it wasn't the right number, so I didn't stop. I said, well, that's, that place is us. So he turned around, he came back, he picked up the car while he was loading it. He he joked and said, oh, am I taking it straight to the wrecking yard, am I? And I said, no, it's got to go to the crash repair to be assessed. And he looked at me and said, they're not going to repair this. And I said, well, no, I don't think they are either. But, you know, they have to have it assessed. So off it goes to the crash repairs. Well... I don't know how it got there so quickly because I mean I've been to this crash repairs I mean it's sort of the local one um, and my mother's car has been repaired there and my daughter's car has been repaired there, so I know I know where it is and I know them anyway it was like it was 10 maybe 15 minutes at most later I can't get there in that time but anyway the phone rings and it's the guy from the crash repairs he said oh he said, I'm just having a look at your car. I said, oh, that was quick. He said, yes. He said, um, look, he said, there's no point in me doing a comprehensive quote and estimate and, you know, going through all the hassle of pricing all the parts and doing all that. He said, because it's written off. I said, well, that's what I thought. He said, he said, the aesthetic things that need repairing are going to cost more than the car's worth itself. He said, that's before we even get into the the mechanical side of what's, you know, what's damaged. I said, okay, no, that's fine. He said, I'm just going to take photos of it and put a report to that effect and send it to the insurance company. I said, no problem. Next morning, um, I realised there was something in the car that we needed. So Helen goes down to the crash repairs. She's there when it opens to pick up this this thing in the car. It sounds like someone's laid a square egg out there by the sound of it, doesn't it? Anyway, so Helen is there when they open in the morning and he said, oh, the car's not here. She said, oh, why is that? And he said, oh, it's been sent to our holding center, which is where they go while, while they're awaiting repair or they're awaiting uh, the insurance company decision or what have you. And then he said, the insurance company want me to do an assessment on it. Like a 
fully, you know, a comprehensive assessment and estimate of what's of the damage and the repairs. And apparently he had a bit of an argument with them and said, what for? There's, it's it's going to cost more than the current market value of the vehicle anyway. So, you know, and, he, and they, they've insisted that that's what he does. So Helen then went from there to the holding centre and the guy, you know, was opening up when she got there and she said she was here, you know, about this particular car, needed to get something out of it. So that was all right. And when she sort of pinpointed which car it was, because, you know, obviously there's multi many cars in, in this building, he, the guy there, who's quite independent of the conversation she had at the crash repairs earlier, took one look at it and said, oh, why don't you be seeing that again? They're going to write that off. And when Helen then turned around and said, well, apparently they've asked that he does a, a proper estimate in quotes, the guy was dumbfounded and he said, well, what for? He said, it's, it's not even a borderline case. It's quite obviously written off. And Helen said, I don't know. I don't know what for. Now, after speaking to these people, one, I still don't think it's going to be repaired. I think they will write it off. But even if they do repair it, I'm very much of the opinion that the damage is so extensive, I don't really want to have a car back that's so badly, been so badly damaged. So we've gone ahead, we bought another car, we picked it up yesterday and we've decided that when they pay out, whenever they haven't decided to pay out the insurance on the other one, we will just top our savings back up. Um, or if by some miracle they actually repair it, when it comes back from the crash repairs, we will sell it ourselves and again, um, recoup the money back into our savings fund. But my, you know, my point is all this argy-bargy is ridiculous. We're now um, Friday afternoon and we still haven't heard from them to say that it's written off. So it's a week we've gone without a car. We can't cancel the registration on it and get a refund because we, we just renewed the registration the day before the accident. And when your car's written off, you can cancel it and the government refund, you know, whatever's left owing. So there's a week's worth of registration. We just kiss goodbye because it's been sitting in that holding yard just because the insurance company haven't got their act together. Uh, it's just totally, totally stupid. And what is also interesting is yesterday morning, which of course was Thursday morning, before we went to pick up the new car, I went online and I took out an insurance policy to cover the new car. And I did it with, with our existing insurance company. And at the end, it comes up and it says, have you had any, uh, have you had any traffic offences in the last five years? No. Um, have you been disqualified from driving in the past five years? No. Uh, do you, have you got, uh, criminal record in the last five years? No. Um, and then the last question is, have you made a claim against any insurance in the last five years? You normally have to tick yes or no. I did, and but because this is with the same company, I didn't have to tick it. It automatically said yes. It said May 2018, vehicle write-off, it said, and then it had the dollar amount that is the current market value of the car, and it had payout written next to it. Now this was yesterday morning. Now they have not contacted me, like they said they will, when they've made their decision. They haven't contacted the crash repairer to tell them of a, a decision. No money has hit our account in the form of, uh, you know, a, a payout check or anything. I mean, when they want their, you know, you better pay the excess before we continue with this claim. 
or they expect you to pay that immediately. But they, well, no matter what they say, according to their computer, they made this decision. And because I did it online before the office opened on Thursday, they must have made this decision at very least on Wednesday afternoon. And they haven't notified us. And they haven't notified the crash repairs. The car's just sitting there. Um, they don't know I've replaced the car. I could be on a push bike for all they know. Um, and it's just disgraceful. 36 years of paying fully comprehensive car insurance, never ever having an at-fault claim on that. I've claimed once and was able to provide the details of the car that actually did hit me and the insurance company I didn't have to pay an excess or anything because they said oh no we would just claim the whole lot back from their insurance company which they did so that's technically not classed as a claim but in 36 years that's the only thing I've ever had to do with them and they're dragging their feet like you know, they've got all the time in the world. But as I say, you better not be late paying them because, you know, they cancel your insurance if you do that. But they make me die. Anyway, that's my beef for this week. I'm sure you all have an insurance story to tell because there's plenty of them out there. So, wish us luck. Hopefully when I see you next week, they will have made a decision and Pat parted with some, some cash because I think I've paid them many, 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 many thousand dollars over, over the last 36 years between home insurance, contents insurance, um, got two cars insured with them, um, caravan, trailer, and when the kids, you know, were teenagers we paid their insurance for them and all that so we have given this company a lot of money over the years they have to give us one check and they're dragging their feet anyway this time next week hopefully it'll all be done and dusted i shall keep you posted okay if you like this video give it a thumbs up hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our other videos and until next time it's goodbye from hilltop farm See ya!